we're going to focus tonight on, uh, as we go into the series, that from the pit to the palace, we're going to focus on um, uh, the test is for your good. The test is for your good. What you're going through, God understands, and God is making you out of that which you're going through. He's try, allowing you to be tried in the fire, not because he has abandoned you or not because he does not care for you, but there's a greater place he's taking you that you have to be qualified for. I, I didn't know. I, I wanted to show that picture, uh, if we could get that on, because it was very interesting. I was reading the paper or, or uh, reading a little Yahoo today, um, and, and I, I saw this. It, you know what's going on in Hawaii, how the whole little town of Maui uh, uh, burned down and that, that and, and that you know I that's the one place in Hawaii that we've been Maui so I was kind of uh, 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 sad to see that that that, that, that town burned down because Jen and I I think that the town that's burning is the town that we actually part part of Maui uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. on the same island uh, uh, back in what year was that nineteen I don't want to. I don't want to hint at my age, but it's been a little while. It's been a little while ago. I I I was um, actually 23 or 24 years old. And I became the, the the entrepreneur of the year in Indiana. My I, my first little shell station. I owned the shell station on the corner of 34th Street, and and uh, we 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 took that business, doubled it. And they were so amazed. So Shell Oil Company actually sent Janet and I to Maui, Hawaii. And just everything was paid for it. And we, and, and we didn't even know how to enjoy things back then because we went there and they, they, they came, a limousine came and got us for dinner. And, you know, and they took us and, and, and we, with all the executive, the, the vice president of International Shell Dutch was there. And we sitting at the table, two little, little uh, country bumpkins from Indiana. And, and, and um, they, they said, well, Order, aren't you going to order? And we, and we thought, you know, back then in African American, we think shrimp is a big thing, some fried shrimp. And they were ordering big old lobsters, and they were putting bibs on. And, and they said, "Well, what you going to order? Don't you want a, 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 a USDA filet mignon? Was like a steak? No, give us some fried shrimp. We're going to get them, Janet. We're going to order fried shrimp." And so, it, it, you know, a ten dollar dish, we, you know, because that's a big thing in our community. And we thought we were eating good, some fried shrimp, and they, and we never realized it. Years later, I looked. I said, they ordered that. That's seventy five dollars. That lo big lobster they had. We ordered a ten dollar plate of fried shrimp, and we thought that we were getting it. But I, 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 I what caught my attention because Maui has always been in my heart, and Janet uh, have always talked about if we ever go on a nice vacation. I want to go back to Maui. We didn't even understand how beautiful it was at the time and how wonderful it was to have that trip given to us. I saw that and, and I saw how everything in this town burned down but that one house. That's an all wooden house and it was amazing. It was on the news that everything around it, the fields burned up uh, and this happened just last week but that one little wooden house stayed up. You can see on both sides the whole town, the cars, everything burned up. The fire just went from house to house, field to field. And they said one reason this house didn't burn down is because things, when the owner purchased this little wood house so many years ago, they made some changes. And in, 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 um, I think they, 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 they put vegetation around the house, and, and they, I think they put a, a steel roof on it or, or something. But, but, but my point is um, the reason why the house didn't burn up with the rest of the houses is because they did some things that caused it not to burn. So I wanted that to relate that to you all that there's going to be some fires that's going to come in your life. And if you prepare before they come, it's most likely you're not going to burn up. Now, so, so let me break that down a different way because I'm not trying to threaten you. Oh, it's going to be a fire at your house on Halloween. No, what I'm saying is your life is going to have some things that are going to really burn your heart. But if you prepare ahead of time knowing that they're coming, you might not be damaged by the fire. The fire is inevitable. There's going to be some trials and tribulations. There's going to be some problems. I can guarantee you that. Uh, uh, the Bible says those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And it wasn't just talking about the old-fashioned apostles. It was talking about the devil's going to attack your mind. Okay, so may, may, maybe he's not going to send somebody to rob your house. He's just going to have you depressed. But if you prepare. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is success. The key to success is preparation. Preparation covers success. A lot of people are not successful because they expect luck. And I always expect it to be lucky. I always say, 
what the world calls luck is really preparation meeting opportunity. There's no free lunch. Nothing comes just because you look good. There's nothing, there's no success if you don't properly prepare for it. So keep that in mind as we go into today's uh, uh, lesson that there's some things that you're supposed to have. There's some things that you're supposed to do. There's some places that you're supposed to go that's going to go right in line, uh, even with our uh, 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 Saints meeting, when, when I teach this Friday, we're going to teach again on um, self-righteousness and hypocrisy, things that damage the church. But once again, when we know, when we know that I'm weak in this area, when we know that I'm going to be challenged in this area, when we know God does not fault you for being tempted, he says, in the midst of your temptation, I'll give you a way of escape. God does not fault you because the devil is attacking you. God fought you when you don't listen to him, when you turn your head and go the other way, when he's saying, this is the way out. Now, if, uh, when that fire was going on, if those people on that island had said, you know what, I think I'm staying. You know, most of those people, some, they say some of the people actually ran, jumped in the ocean and actually survived. And, and, and uh, well, they were used to that because the volcanoes come sometime and they run, jump in the ocean, try to swim away, swim to the next island. And they're great swimmers. But those that, 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 you know, some people actually lost their lives, and I believe it's still in the hundreds that they can't find right now. Because you know why? Some people were actually stubborn. We know the fire is coming. And because I don't understand the fire, I'm going to stay here. If somebody that's educated enough to, uh, enough to tell you how the fire is going to act in your community, you ought to take their advice and move. And so when they told those people to um, actually Get off the island. We got a free ferry, a ferry ride that we can get you off the island. Some people said, no, I'm going to be stubborn. I'm going to stay here. That's why it's still a thing. 900 of them missing. And so you pray for them because uh, that was a tragic event. And, and, and I guess I get out of this even with that story. They didn't understand the fire. They, they don't have a lot of forest fires. Or, but with climate change and the, the crops being dry and the fields being dry, Anything could happen right now. There's fires breaking out everywhere. But because it, some of them didn't understand the fires, um, that caused a lot of them to put themselves in deep trouble. You may not understand what's going on, but you got to listen to the voice that God sends you. Uh, let me say that again. Let me say that in a different way. Just because you don't understand doesn't mean the test is not coming. God has sent somebody to help you get through the test. And because we don't understand, we discount even the voice of God. Well, I don't know how many people said in the days of Noah, I've never seen rain before. So, so I, I, I can't believe Pastor Melly because I, I, I don't, I, you know, I've never seen the precipitation of the earth go back up to the clouds and come down the way the weatherman's saying it now. But just because you don't understand precipitation and how it goes back up and comes back to the earth doesn't mean trouble's not coming your way. So if you don't listen and you don't prepare, you get on the highway of trouble, you may not know the exit of, 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 of relief, how to get off on the right exit. So that's what these Bible classes and that's what saints meaning and that's what um, communicating with the leaders in your church, that's what that's all about. Because God didn't always give you the answer, but he certainly will allow you to participate in the solution. And so, uh, uh, but, but one other thing about this, this situation in Hawaii they didn't sound the alarm on the island, the warm people, because the people were only used to volcanoes. And they said that, so when they, the, the, the state of Hawaii said, the reason why we didn't sound, sound the alarm, because when we sound that alarm and volcanoes are erupting, the people run back into the fields and everything, climb trees. This was not the time to go climb a tree. So, we, so they said, we didn't sound the alarm because we didn't want the Hawaiian residents to run in the field and start climbing trees. We, we wanted them to run towards the water. Said, you know, and, and, and so, so uh, things are coming. And I think, get this, I appreciate you that accepted what I said last week when I said, uh, pray for Sister Joyce. I mean, things are getting ready to come. Nobody knew what was going to happen Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. But you listen to the man of God. Just because I didn't know don't mean he was wasting his breath. God has a called person in your life to tell you, you, you better turn right. I can't, just because I can't tell you what's on the left side, when we tell you to turn right, try to turn right. But, but so I, I, I'm encouraging you to um, try to get an understanding with God and try to hear the voice of God. One last thing I got to say before I uh, go further. I appreciate Brother Elder 
Terry uh, Floyd. I appreciate that he um, he brought Brother Jim, Brother James, to church, and and he he openly said the Lord led him to do that. Now, who would have known that you know his days were numbered? Aren't you glad when people hear the voice of God? Even if you don't know what, what they heard, he heard the voice of God. And I, I was thinking when I read the email, when, when I got the news, that Brother James had went on transition with the Lord. That's the first thing I thought of. Let me tell Terry, thank you as a pastor. Thank you. People that listen to the voice of God, I'm glad to be in the same church with you. I'm glad. People that listen to the voice of God, because you know why? God's voice is not always the most popular thing. You know, God can be telling you one thing, but the devil will tell you 99 and a half things. And, and, and you only have one reason to do the right thing, and that's because God said it. Yeah. You have 99 reasons to do something else, but what God says you want to do. So as God is calling us into deeper depths, listen to him. As God is dealing with our heart, yield to him. As God is directing you, follow his hand. Uh, and, 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 and I'll talk a little bit more about that on Friday, that uh, that. Even in this church, we're going through some things that, you know, I, I was talking to Sister Joyce, the oldest member of the church, and she, and she told me she didn't mind me repeating. She said, the one thing that I have problems with is change. <laughs> she, she said, change. And I said, yeah. And so, and I went home and I prayed about that because change is hard. You know, uh, uh, we've been doing this for 30 years to stay saved. Now you say do it a different way. And, you know, I, I just mastered staying saved with this. The PAW told me not to wear earrings, and I just mastered that. Now you telling us we can. And it's not a matter whether it's right or wrong, but it changed us something to me. You had me thinking that I was praying to do what you said do. I fasted just to do what you said we should do. Now you're telling me we don't have to do it anymore. So, but in, in, in church, change will come as far as not because God is changing, but the methods of drawing people to the table may change. Where we gave dinners one day, you know, uh, uh, where we, uh, uh, we may see a need now to spend more time with the young people or because they're, the devil is on attack for the young people greater than it's ever been in the history of the earth. I mean, everything. They didn't have the iPads and the different things that tempt them. They, they're trying to look at a kid's story, and this pops up on the iPad. The devil's putting something in their mind. But they didn't have the TV shows. And, 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 and I understand parents that said, you know, you know, I can't even trust them in the public school because this kid will say this to them. Then I have to spend the whole week ministering to them or try to explain why. But, but, but the Lord knows how to help us. And the Lord knows how to shield your kids in school. The Lord knows how to shield your kids in the neighborhood. And the Lord knows how to shield your kids in the grocery store because the devil is on attack to destroy the kids. The, the family is the backbone of the church. The family is the backbone. So we do want uh, God to continue to uh, bless the kids. Now, as I said, um, there are three or four scriptures that we're going to get to. Then I'm going to, after I give you these three or four scriptures, and we don't have to stand because we're going to go several places. Then I'm going to give you an introduction to the series that I'm teaching. But the three or four scriptures that we're going to talk about is to tell you how we got to this place that um, from the pit to the palace, from the dirty place to the luxurious place, from the dungeon to the palace, uh, uh, the place that nobody wants to be in, the pit. The place where bugs are running around crawling at your skin and the place where it's dark and there's and is, is, is no food and, and there's no water and, and there's no luxury and there's no friends. Nobody's in the pit with you. But God is saying that sometime you got to go through the pit to get, get to the palace. Everybody wants a seat in the palace, but you can't get in the palace unless you're qualified to be in the palace. In other words, everybody wants to be up here. Everybody wants to be in that happy place. C.C. Winan, the singer, she, she, she wrote a song about the throne room. Everybody wants to get in the throne room where God's smiling at you. Everybody wants to be in the place where God is pleased with you. But in order for us to get there, we got to get where God needs us to be in our heart. God's not going to give you the blessing if you're not prepared to, to operate in that authority. Because operating outside of your authority can cost you your spiritual life. Uh, getting something that you shouldn't have can cost you your regular, your, your, your human life. And so we want you to be in the place that God wants you to be. Because I've said it a thousand times, your victory is where? And if I love it, man. I love it. Oh, you're a pastor of my own heart. You remember that. Your victory is in this heart and your purpose. A lot of people, let me, I'm not going to go too far. I'm okay. A, 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 a lot, I didn't put this on today. Because, <laughs> Oh, son, just when you got a new, oh, okay, okay. 
Oh, new microphone. Oh, a uh, new mic. But but um, but just when we get to the place where you get it fixed, I feel like I might I might grab the mic tonight. I just feel kind of excited. So you know, I I don't know. I might have to shake the mic then drop the mic. You know, but 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 nevertheless. Um, when you are in your purpose, and I preach a lot about purpose. If, you, if, if you've been pastored by me any time, you know that I'm a purpose and grace preacher. I preach a lot on grace, and that's why I said two, two um, weeks ago, because some things pastors do is not necessarily that God instructs. He gives us the ability, not necessarily that God instructed us to do it. He gives us the ability and the prerogative to use our heart. And so I'll pray about it, and if God doesn't say no, I may choose a person for this, or I may say we should have this revival or something like that. And I'll be the first to tell you what y'all talk to on Friday night. Am I right every time? No. Sometimes somebody can come back and say, well, Pastor, you could have did that a little different. And I'll say, pray for me, you know, uh, let, pray for me more that I'll, I'll try to follow closer to the leading of the Lord. But, 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 but the point that I'm stressing is that when you understand that that. Grace and purpose are two of the most important things in your life. Grace because you got to understand God's love for you. God is not interested in throwing you out the door. God is not up in heaven with a shotgun saying, if you go to the right, you got it. You go to the, God is not watching you with a gun, a magnifying gun. God is saying that, I know you're human. I know you have issues. I know these things have been tempting you all your life. I know you have an appetite for that, so just let me help you. The problem is we don't accept God's help. You got to be prepared to accept God's hand. You got, and God will take you places that you never would have gone before. And uh, but in the, and so I said the, the, a couple of weeks ago, I said, if we were in the world, we would use the word lucky. But we're in the church, so we'll use the word grace and bless. You're pretty blessed that God has given me the opinion to preach grace the next few years, meaning that I'm not looking for anybody to be perfect as far as what you think perfect is. I think perf perfection is not allowing anything to stick to you to make the right decisions with God. If you make a mistake, we fall down, but we get up again. And, 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 and now we don't sin because we know grace got us covered. Oh, he got my back, I'm gonna do this. You know, he got my back, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. No, no, God don't have your back like that. But when you realize that maybe I shouldn't do that that way, or maybe I shouldn't go over there, ask God for help. Ask God to send you help. Ask God to direct your heart. And God will. But the, David said, when I hid my sins, I was sick to my bones. My bones grew, uh, uh, what did he say, grew old or something, David. And I'll get the scripture, uh, the exact scripture. But David talked about how it affected him physically when he hid his sin. People say, well, what do you mean high sin? When you're not reasoning with God or, or re refuse to uh, talk to God about your weaknesses. And sometimes talking to God is not necessarily meaning that, um, well, I'm not telling anybody I may talk. Sometimes it means talking to Sister Cindy, Evangelist Cindy. Sometimes it means talking to Elder um, Floyd or Pastor Mallet. And, 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 the, and, the, and the ultimate thing is uh, why I, I use Sister Evangelist and Elder because some things you might could tell her that you can't tell me. And uh, talking to First Lady Sister Janet, find out who the leaders are in your church, but confess your faults one to another. And, 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 and uh, don't go around telling everybody, you know, uh, I've said this a thousand times. You open your mouth and say the wrong thing to the wrong person. It might make it to the to the market before you come out of the house tomorrow. So know who your leaders are. But nevertheless, um, I've said that. You're pretty blessed because I, I'm, I'm willing to go before the throne of grace for you. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm willing to fast and pray with you. That's what I do every single day. I preach that everybody has issues. Nobody's in here perfect, and we'll talk more about that Friday. Um, you, you, you are only perfect by God's righteousness because he chose you. And when you do the right thing by him, it's righteousness. Not the right thing by Mallet, not the right thing by Sister Jenna, but the right thing by Jesus. When you try to make the right decision, that's what righteousness is, doing the right thing. Uh, uh, and we'll get more on that Friday. Let's go to the scriptures because we're talking about from the pit to the palace. And our theme for today is the next few minutes that the test was meant for you. It was good for you. And, and how can that be? A lot of people are saying that, um, well, don't tell me that trouble was for my good. Don't tell me that it was meant for me to suffer a little bit. I want to, nobody wants to suffer. If, if I told you, you know, I, 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 uh, I had $10 for you, but you got to walk up in the heat up to the corner 
and bring back uh, six packs of water, somebody might say, well, I'm not going for that. Nobody likes the working part of life that caused you to suffer. But, but uh, we will see that all things in this series work together for your good. The things that cause you not to smile, the things that get on your nerve, it's working for your good. It's working to make you who God wants you to be. It's working to get you where God is trying to get you. And, 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 and that goes in everything, meaning that, I mean, from your marriage to your schoolwork to, to uh, your neighborhood to your job, all things are working together for your good. Everything that you go through is working together to make you for the good thing in your life, the good place that God is trying to get you, the good results that God is trying to get in your life, the good ending that God has for you, and that's all in your purpose. Let's go to Genesis 37. Uh, we're going to start our series. Our, our series will start off in Genesis. And, and as I said, you don't have to stand because I got four scriptures just to give you the introduction of where we're going to go. Um, um, I, I've been wanting to teach on this, this series since I got here, but a couple of times I got started, and, and, and my problem is I go announcing things before God announced it. You know, I'm going to teach on so-and-so. I'm going to bring so-and-so church. And, and you know, and, and, uh, Pastor uh, Elder Kevin, he uh, he oftentimes reminded me, he reminded me in the kitchen on Sunday, well, did you ever call that brother back that, that came to uh, 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 Kalamazoo for a job? I said, you're right, I didn't call him. He said, I was praying for him, but you never said anything else about it. So oftentimes I get excited when God is doing something, but you got I myself pray for me. We got to see things through as a family, as a team. We got to, if God puts somebody out there, don't, don't, don't waste the talent. Don't bury it. Do what God, take the time to do what God said before you. Get it done. But, but what we're going to see, the, the 37th chapter of Genesis, it tells a very intriguing and exciting story. And it goes all the way to the 50th chapter. It is in this book, uh, which is part of the, the Hebrew Bible, which is called, you know, I teach on it all the time, the Torah. You're right. The Torah. The Torah is the Hebrew Bible, and, and, and the first five books of the Torah is the first five books of the Holy Bible. Well, you say, well, why are you talking about the Torah? Because remember, it was a Hebrew Bible before it was a King James Holy Bible. And so we just took that and we and, and added it with the New Testament and interpreted it uh, into our Bible that, that we read. And so, so and, and, and the, uh, a lot of people, even that are uh, uh, Messianic Jews, still refer to the Torah, still go... Because it's the same. Genesis, Exodus, it still talks about in the beginning God created everything and, and how Moses uh, uh, led the children of Israel out of uh, Egypt. And, 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 and even so, this give a, what we're uh, are going to teach on the next few weeks, they give a big meaning to how the children of Israel even got in there. Some of the major transactions that occurred in the child of God's life and some of the promises that God gave us because we're now uh, the representatives of Abraham ourselves. Once you come into the body of Christ, all the promises that were made to Abraham goes for you. We still have the promise of Abraham. God will still give you and uh, uh, bless you, bless your family. The promises that he, he made in Deuteronomy when he said, I'll, I'll bless you if you keep my commandments. I'll bless you at home. I'll bless you at school. I'll bless you in the field. I'll bless you in the store. I'll bless you. In other words, if you keep my commandments, you won't have to worry. I don't care how things look. If you try to serve me, you won't have to uh, get an awesome. You, you won't have to worry about things that look like they've not changed. I will change them for you. Our problem is it's so hard to rely on God. I mean, it's, e it's, easier, to talk, it's easier said than done. Pastor, you're standing up there telling me that, that God will help me pay my bills, and I'm the one making $4 an hour, you know, you know or, or you're telling me that God's going to keep me healthy, and I have this pain in my side every day. Somehow, we have to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Somehow we have to take this word of God and understand what he meant in it and, 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 and uh, make it relevant to us today. And, that, and, and I know that's hard. I, I, I know that's hard to say, but hopefully this series will give you a better understanding that if God says something to you, he means it. If God gives you a purpose in life, he means what he says. Don't let the situation change you. I said that so many times. Situations don't change God. God changes situations. I mean, don't you think because it's dark, because things didn't go my way, God is not for me. Or because I didn't see it all, it's not the way. It is what God said it is. I don't care how dark it gets. It is what God said it is. I don't care how much pain you in. It is what God said it is. I don't care how lonely you get. And it may even look like God didn't keep his word. But it is what God 
not said it is regardless of what you see. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight because what I see is not consistent with what God said in my mind. But because I have faith, I know God's got my back right. uh, because I trust him. So, so in the, in, in, we're going to start with the 37th chapter of this first book of the Bible, the, of the Torah. And it tells how God uh, uh, showed his hand for the first time greatly in several places. It shows how God will keep, have our back regardless of what we're going through. It shows how God will take care of us as people, as his children. And, 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 and it is in this chapter that God shows us that he began to deal with a young person, a teenager, and, 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 and changed the world with his ability starting to deal with a teenager. And so I'm going to read just four places, and I'm, we're not going to go all the way from 37 to 50. We're going to read three or four verses just to give you an idea of why we're going to spend the next few weeks going from Genesis 37 to Genesis 50. When we finish with this, you will know every verse from Genesis 37 chapter to Genesis 50, and you will know why it applies to you, why these Abrahamic promises apply to you, why the, uh, why the Mosaic law even applies to you in places. And so you will understand it a little better. Genesis 37 and 5, can, can we read that? And, and, and I'm going to need you to read loud because um, I have it in my notes. I don't have the exact scripture of the verse printed, but I know that's the one we should go. Genesis 37 and 5, can we read that? Okay, so Joseph had a vision. So, so th th this is what it tells us. When, when, when God gives you a vision, what happens? He says, brothers, hey, don't you expect folk to love you because God is lifting you up? Don't you expect folk to love you because you go to the right church? Don't you expect people to love you because you're starting to see something you didn't see before? Oh, you know, you know, you know it's going to be, you know, you don't want to go to church if they like you. You know what? When you, when you, when you, when you, you know, go out and keep the liquor store in business. That's what folks really like you. Yeah. Uh, folks really like you when you hate people. Folks love you. You know, it, it's when you, when you, when you don't want to see children succeed, when you don't want to see God's plan. Oh, your dad would love you. Folks got a nice place. But the, the problem is, you start to get you to see a target to go to the place where he's going. And so, when there's that first scripture that it tells about God began to deal with this man. You know, what I can say is that what I saw in this If you went and, and I gave that example to this because if you went and told people, you know, like Joseph, Joseph got excited and went and told his brother, God gonna use me, I'm gonna be a big shot one day, I'm gonna be in charge. He goes, like, wait a minute. You, you're not even old as me and you're talking to me stupid like that? You're nothing but the run of the crowd. You're just the bottom of the litter. And Joseph said, but, but if God said it, it is. And, you know, I, I'm gonna be something because 
I, I didn't get this from the, 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 the 1-800 ask Sarah. I got this from God. And, 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 and his brothers hated him. My point is this. As God began to use you, folks may not like everything about you. As God give you favor, folks may not like that. So let's go to the second scripture. Uh, the second verse is in 37, 16 through 20. So this is the beginning of the series. God speaks to a teenager and say, I'm going to use you. And because God spoke to the one that they didn't expect him to speak to, they thought maybe if it was the second oldest brother, it'd be okay. But if it was the oldest one, that makes sense under Jewish custom. He's the one that he's next in charge of something happened to dad. But God spoke to the one I didn't think, I mean, the one that Joseph said, well, you know what? Uh, I can't worry about that. But he was a little arrogant, so he started tattling on him, you know, because he, he, he kind of knew who he was. And when they did something wrong, he ran and told daddy, hey, daddy, Reuben's out there uh, uh, taking a break. <laughs> so he, started, he became a little snitch. And, and, but, but that's another part. We, we're going to get into that. Once again, once you, know, once you know that God is using you, folks might start calling you a snitch because now you're you worried about the church being righteous. Hey, hey pastor, are, are, are you sure? You know, uh, uh, you, because there's something on me that don't let me look the other way. And, 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 and so, but, but that's another whole story. Let's go to uh, 37 and, and, and uh, 16 through 20. Joseph went looking for his brother. His father sent him out to his brother, and, and, and he went looking for him, so he didn't see him. So he asked somebody, where's my brother? Where's my brothers? And he said, they're over there. Oh, he didn't know what was coming, but he, he, he's innocent. And, and what happened? So now God is using somebody and folks hate him that much. It gets a little deeper. God's trying to use him, but the world hates him. Jesus said if they hated me, they certainly going to hate you. Because the flesh don't like what God is doing. So, and it wasn't so much his brothers were haters as much as they were being led by the flesh. And so I, I never expect people that are unsaved to ex-save. Ex, you know, I, I, you know I, I'd show grace. I, you know, I don't have a problem with, you know, Having patience with person because they're just not there yet. If, they, if they're not there, they're not on the 20-yard line. They're not on the 20-yard line. If they're not there, they're, they're not there. And, 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 and that's why I, I love the kids. I, I love even when Nathan makes noise because he's a child. And, 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 and that's that. Let kids be kids. And, and don't expect them to act like they're 45 years old. Because when you start treating people that are five years old like they're 45 years old, then you're going to have a self-righteous problem. God says, let them be. You remember the kids were pushing to, to, to Jesus, and the disciples got smart. The disciples were the ones that kept the church in order. Disciples start saying, shut those kids up. And Jesus said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let those kids put, let, 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 matter of fact, bring them up front. He said, because they have the right attitude. They believe what I'm saying. He said, unless you get like that. You'll never see heaven. <laughs> I guess it kind of, you know, but, 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 but the point that we're making here is that when, his, when God decided to use Joseph, his brothers, had his own flesh and blood, hated him. They, they, I mean, so they were being used by the devil. So now let's go. So now we see that when you're going to be used by God, uh, uh, people are not going to like you. Let's go to 37, 36. Oh, go, go ahead. Read 19, 20. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Stay. I mean, because God wanted to use him, uh, good thing he didn't have some background that they could talk about. We, we go say that he went back to the bar and got killed. Good, good thing, that, you know, good thing he didn't have anything they could pin to him. But get this, because he, remember, it started with the dream. I'm using the word vision here. It started with the vision. 
he saw something that God wanted to do with him. As long as he didn't see that, people didn't have any problem with him. It's the moment that you see God trying to use me. God's trying to, I, I got to do better. God's trying to use me. God's trying to take me somewhere. I have a reason now to walk the straight and narrow path. I see that God loves me enough to call me. God loves me enough to appoint me. God knows that I always wanted this, but, but I just didn't know how to get there. Now God has taken me there. Folks hate you for that. His own brothers hated him. And, and, and not only did they hate him, they said, let's kill him. Let's get rid of him. I'm so glad God is a fence around us every day. <laughs> You'll be surprised we want to destroy your life just because you're trying to do the right thing. You will be surprised. And, and, and so now that we see what will happen if you're trying to do the right thing, let's go to Genesis uh, uh, 37, 36, and 37. Okay, 37, 36. Let's see what happened to him since his brothers hated him. 37, 36. Now get this, what it says now, he's in slavery. The gypsies came along, but his brother sold him, gave him to the gypsies. The gypsies went and sold him and, 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 and down in Egypt. So now that's how he got into Egypt. That's, that's how the children of Israel ended up in Egypt. Remember Moses, let my people go. It started in this story. This one boy that God was using to save his people ended up a slave in Egypt, all because God put an economic anointing on him, a gift that could save the world. You know, and let me stress this again. That's another reason why we have to take care of the children, because you don't know what gifts God is putting on them. You may see them as a kid in church, and this might be the next president, the first female president of the United States. And, that's, and I'm saying that because God knows how to put his people in the place to save his church. God knows how to put his people in the place to save his people. And so God will do manipulate the system if he has to to make things happen the way he need them to happen. And so we, we, we see back there Brad and Morgan's beautiful daughters, and, and, and I hear Brad at the altar teaching his daughters the Lord's Prayer. You know, you didn't think I heard of it. I'm, I'm praying, I'm hearing everything in the same. And he's telling them, what, what, I mean, isn't that beautiful that God started to invest in them at that young age because he knows what he's going to have them do at 25? Oh, come on, if you could just see what God is doing. And you can just feel what God is doing. So I encourage you. Uh, 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 Tess, I'm so glad that you came here because God is ready to invest in your life and ready to just, I mean, do the things that nobody dreamed that you didn't even dream of. Right. Said, Eyes have not even seen. And, and I'm ready. But once you see that, that's when all hell breaks out. Now that I can see that who God is. I kept singing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yeah. Now that they're open, the devil's trying to roadblock me. Yeah. Now that he's opening my ears, now the folk act like they don't like me. And, 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 and the last scripture, uh, uh, now that we know uh, what happened, that Joseph was actually sold into slavery, let's go to Genesis 41 and 41, and then I can, I got about 10 minutes after that, just give you the introduction of the class, and we'll go from there. Genesis 41 and 41. Pharaoh said, Ooh, a good ending, isn't it? Pharaoh tells Joseph, this is the same person that brothers hated a few years ago, wanted to get killed, and you thought all that stuff was happening to you because God had forgot about you. The same person that folk Said he's not even worth taking back home, sell him into slavery. How many times something has happened to you that you sat up at night saying, Lord, why did you let that happen to me? Or not even God, why, I mean, why is this happening? Ask yourself that. Because if I did it my way, I would come out with a better solution. No, the test is meant for your good. And I'm going to give you the scripture and I'm going to get ready to close up. All that stuff you're going through. God has a purpose on your life. All that stuff that's chasing after you, God has a purpose on your life. Because if I 
fix things up. I can really fix things up. You know, I can straighten people out. This, you know, those haters. I, I, I know how to. I know where to send them. You know, I, you know. But if I let God do it, it's kind of. You know, God kind of takes His time. But God says one reason I take my time is I let you stay in the fire. And, and, and I was listening to Marvin Sepp uh, talk about. He went to his jeweler and he says uh, he wanted the purest gold that he could buy. Marvin Sepp is a singer in uh, out of the. Detroit, well, he's out of, Michigan. you all know Marvin, he's not too far, he, he was pastoring the church right near here. So anyway, Marvin was talking about, uh, Pastor Marvin was talking about, um, he asked the jeweler, well, how do you know when the gold is pure, when the fire is real hot? The, 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 the jeweler said, no, but that's part of it. He said, well, how, how do you know? The jeweler said, I know when the gold is totally pure, when I can look in it and see myself. The fire makes it so hot and melt off all the impurity. There's nothing but gold there. And God is letting the fire get hot on you so he can look at you and see himself in you. See, right now, you don't know how to turn the other cheek. You, you would if you could, but you just don't know how. I mean, you, uh, you, you really don't know how to let yourself go. It gets to the place where there's no more you, but it's the God in you. And that's when you're pure gold. And God says, buy me gold that's been what? Tried in the fire. God says, I'm, you will come forth as pure gold if you let me do it. And so I admired that Marvin said that, that, that even God in the natural knows how to show us what he's talking about. You, you can be 14 karat gold. I mean, you, can't, you belong to the church, but you're only 14 karat gold. Uh, let, 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 let me make it a little deeper. You can be saved and not be pure gold. Oh, man, I don't want nobody jumping me in. <laughs> I got a couple calls after last Bible class, so, you know, I, I don't need any calls this week. But, uh, what? Well, no, let me change it. Lord, forgive me. Call me if you want to. Call, please, please. Yes. That, that was, I was just being humorous with you. Please, it could, because with the few calls I got after Bible study last week, I was very glad that they did call me for somebody to say, Pastor, uh, uh, what could I do differently? I'm glad. I'm very glad that somebody. So I shouldn't be so humorous that I make the family think that, so, Lord, please forgive me. I was just trying to be funny. You all are always smiling at me. I try to make you laugh, and I end up saying things I shouldn't say. Please, you pray for me. We got to get out of that. But I'm glad that we come to the realization that God wants us to be just like him. And, 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 and if you think that you don't need to go through the fire, maybe that's why you're going through the fire. If you think that, you know, I'm already as pure as I can be. Maybe that's why God turned the, the fire up. Because guess what? We're just not there yet. I, I have been there. I, you know, I, I've told the story how 20 years ago, or what was it, 25 years ago, when I went in the office and kicked the man's wall, and, 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 and I was saved and sanctified and, and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues, to the, and I went in there and got mad because they took my contract. And, and, and I was saved and probably had been to church that Sunday. But I had to be tried in the fire a little bit. So God's dealt with me. And, and, and when I went in there, I said, you all shouldn't have did my contract like that. And, and he wanted to explain to me why they're taking money out of my pocket. And I'm like, I got to raise a family, and I got kids, and I did this and that. You shouldn't have did it. And he said, he should have kicked his wall and called him a name, and the pictures fell off the wall. <laughs> and the reason I'm smiling about that is because those were issues that God had to deal with. And I'm confessing to you all. I mean, I don't do that stuff anymore. 25 years gone by. I shouldn't be doing that anymore. But back then, younger, when I went out to the car, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to do something I didn't want to do. To submit. Go back in there and tell him you're sorry. And tell him you're saved. I was like, I was out in the car, out in the parking lot, because God is now speaking to me. He didn't tell me he's going to use me and all that. And he talks to me. And I got mad. So I have the right to tell him. Holy Spirit said, but no, go back in there and tell him you're saved and you're sorry. And so what I did, what most saints don't want to do, I had a problem going back in there, but I'm kind of got an attitude with God. Have you ever done anything that you got an attitude with God, but you just did it because I don't want to cause a problem, so I'm going to do it. Like a little kid with God. I didn't like what the pastor said, but I'll accept it. I want some more cookies and milk. God, don't go give me my cookies if I don't do. And, that, that, and so that, 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 we, we get like little kids with God. 
God says, obey me. And maybe you didn't understand what I meant. Because you can only see so far. And it made sense to you what you saw. You're my daughter, you're my son, and I love you. But you've got to listen and grow up. Because when you grow up, you'll be like gold tried in the fire. You don't know why I made that decision in your life. But I know all things will work together for your good. That's why the series is about the test was good for me. It was good for me to be afflicted. It was good for me to get told off. It was good for me that the pastor didn't give me what I want. It was good for me that God didn't give me what I wanted. Right. Right. It was good for me. Let's go to the scripture. I'm getting ready to close out, y'all. I'm almost finished. Let's go to the scripture. You may know my secretary when, the, when uh, I talk about, is it John? First John? Go to first James. Go to James. I'm glad my secretary know my notes better than I do. Okay, the first James? James, first chapter one. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You got it. Okay. Could you read that, please? I'm going to step on the gas if it's all right with you guys because I like you to be going out, getting ready to go home in five minutes, so let me step on the gas. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. This is the person that go through these things. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. He said rejoice. So not only should you go through it, you should be rejoicing yeah. that you're going through it. Because when you come out of it, you'll be as pure gold. One other scripture. Now let's go to, uh, was it 12? James 1 and 12. Oh, I read that wrong. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's okay. But let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And I'm almost finished for today. Oh, I wish I had more time. Do y'all want to stay another hour? Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, no. I, I, I would do that, but I, I would prepare the people. I would tell you that Bible class is going to be, you know, people have plans. But I like that, Pastor Kelly. I, I, I like that. Psalm 119, verse 71. Yes. It is good for me. No, wait, 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 wait. Say this real loud. Say this. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. It is good for me that I was attacked. It was good that they talked about me behind my back. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It was good that God let these things come that made me cry last Sunday. It was good for me that I might learn thy statutes. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. I was learning things. I was learning things. You put me in my purpose. It was good for me that my heart was afflicted. It was good for me that the person said something that hurt my feelings. It was good for me. Let me conclude by saying this. Not only is it good for you to be here and hear this tonight, but it's good for you to keep doing what God has you doing. It's good for you to keep going in the direction that God is sending you. And, and it is good for you if it doesn't seem like it's good for you. It's good for you to go through the test that God is allowing you to go through. And you know, maybe it's not, maybe you're not tempted to smoke a cigarette. Maybe you're not tempted to drink a bottle of whiskey. Maybe you just get your feelings hurt. Maybe you just... Uh, Maybe things ain't always right at home. Maybe uh, people on the job don't always treat you the way you deserve to be treated. Now, you know what I say, you deserve to be treated like that. But God knows how to bring pure gold out. I didn't mean treated the bad way. You deserve to be treated the way that you think you should. Uh, uh, you deserve to be treated better. But God will allow you to be treated bad to bring the fire, bring the gold out in you. God will allow the fire to heat up on you because he has a purpose for you. Now, do you think Joseph could have been the vice president of Egypt, the governor over Egypt, if he didn't have the strength to handle it? God said it was good for him to be thrown in that pit. I needed somebody 
that could take problems. It was good for them to ignore him and hate him. I needed somebody that could handle a whole government. And remember, Joseph going down in Egypt is like, what's that president of Russia, Vladimir Putin? That's like Putin's son coming and being the vice president of the United States. That's Joseph went to a country that they hated Jewish people. He had no dealing with Jewish people, and he becomes the vice president. That's like you going over to China, and they make you put you a, a palace right next to the prime minister's palace. God does things like that. And if you want to see some things that you would never see on your own, let God do some things in your life that you would never call on your own. Because you may not call for the things that God is allowing you to go through. But then you want God to put you where you would never made it in your life. Let God get you ready for that which he needs you to be prepared for. There's places you're getting ready to go. If you're touched by this sermon and this is your day, if you want to uh, accept the baptism before we go home in any way, whether it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the baptism in water, you, you can come. It, it's, it's totally fine. We will assist you in whatever way we can because we know we all need to be saved. You know, I... Uh, I remember that day that I uh, got baptized in the name of Jesus. I remember that day. And uh, to this day, I can't explain it. I can't explain what happened that day. Um, I remember that I got up. Uh, district Elder J.E. Moore, he was a district elder. He's a bishop now. James Moore from Illinois was uh, preaching a revival crusade in Detroit. And I got up. And I, I decided that I, I, I want to be baptized. And I went down the aisle. And... Um, they, 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 they took me in the dressing room and changed my clothes, and, and I got in the water. And when they baptized me, something came over me. And to this day, I can't explain it. When, 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 when I got out of the pool and came back, it was water everywhere. And they said, and, and so, because I, I, I always thought that when, when they say shout and the Holy Ghost fall on you and all that, uh, you know, I, I thought most of those people are faking anyway. That's what I thought. You know, people just trying to keep up with the status quo. He, uh, the elder jumped up, so I got to jump up. And, 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 but to this day, something took over my body, my mind, and, and they say I shouted what they, what they call shout. And the Holy Spirit came on me, and water went everywhere. And, and when I came to myself, it was water everywhere. And, they, and, and when, I, when, they, when they finished took, taking me back to the dressing room, they, people were patting me on the back. And I didn't understand what they were saying. They were saying, Boy, you shouted, you shouted, oh, the Lord got you that day. And, um, and because of that, I thought that all of my experiences with God would be like that. So then they, told, they took me back to the tarrying room. And so uh, uh, I thought I was supposed to duplicate that. So when I started feeling my tongue getting thick, I started kicking and jumping. And the old sister, she pulled me up and said, no, boy, that ain't it. <laughs> You can't make this thing happen. You, 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 it's not you. It's God. And so I, I got down on my knees again. So I said, hallelujah, Lord, I appreciate it. Ah, ta, 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 ah. And, uh, so I, I don't want to tear up now because I, I promote you tear something up around here. You pay for it. But, but um, I didn't get it like that. How I got the Holy Ghost was in the most quiet, quiet way that I didn't, because and, and, I was expecting something different. I was expecting to scream and jump and all that because something came over me the day I got baptized the Sunday before. And isn't it like God? You won't always understand how we do it. I give that testimony to say like this. Just yield to God. He's ready for you. Just, just, just. I, you, you may sit off somewhere quietly and it won't compete with the next person. Or you may get loud. We, we don't mind. However God comes, let him come. You may scream. You may not. You may sing quietly or just hum or just moan or, but, it, 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 but the Spirit of God, and we believe that when the Holy Ghost come, there was something that would take over you at that point and cause you to speak in other tongues as an evidence that I'm in you. Cause you to speak a heavenly language that you have never spoken in school, and it comes from heaven. It comes from God. And so, but what I encourage people is that if you're striving to go deeper, don't tell God how to do it. Just release. Just when, when, he'll, do what he, he'll do what he do, and he'll do it the right way.